Hey everybody, Arthur here. I'm back. I took a mini vacation just to decompress just for a few days after the marathon that was the eShop's closing. I mean, what was that, right? That was intense. But back now and people, we're over 5,000. We're not over 9,000 yet, but we are hiring. If you're not subscribed yet, I am hiring you. So do me a solid and click that subscribe button and let's march to over 9,000! <laughs> and to commemorate, I made this special video where we are one last time, for a little while, concentrating on the little giant, the 3DS. This time we're taking a tour through all the 3DS games and stuff I've got digitally as a way for us to take a final look back at all the wonderful stuff we cannot get legitimately anymore. My purchases decisions on the 3DS were heavily based on games that were exclusive to the system and digital only, so there's a lot here that became unavailable officially since the stores closed. I have two 3DSs, there is a lot to go through, so this is gonna be very fast paced. I wanna do one of these for the Wii U later and at some point i want to showcase my physical games for these systems so stay tuned for that i always favor physical games over digital so for most cases if the game has a physical that's the version i have so if you don't see some major games you think i should have i probably do but it's physical the eShops are gone so now we can look back fondly at these systems and appreciate the journey we've been through and what a journey it has been. Especially these last few months where I was furiously working on covering the 3DS and Wii U eShops before they closed. Everyone, including me, was scrambling to find what games to get and DLCs as well. It kind of took over our lives in a way. But speaking for myself, it was totally worth it. I've gotten literally hundreds of thank you messages from you guys. I'm still working through responding to a lot of it. And I really want to say thank you back now. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a part of this, for giving this tiny, obscure channel a chance, for supporting and contributing to this movement of giving due recognition to the fantastic lesser known games, which there are so many of. It's a commonplace and maybe a corny thing to say, but this would mean nothing without your active support. With a comment, subscribing to the channel, leaving a like, a super thanks, or joining the channel's Patreon, that makes a huge difference in keeping the lights on here. So once again, thank you so much. I am stoked about this recent milestone because not only has the channel grown in numbers, but our community has developed a lot. All sorts of interesting conversations in the comments with topics like games preservation, emulation, physical games and all that. I feel like we all have similar mindset and interests in gaming and that there is a lot we can share with each other, which is part of the reason why I decided to create a Discord server. And you're invited. It's up and running already. Check the description for a direct link to it. Here is how it's looking now. And I'm totally open to suggestions to improve it, by the way. I welcome your input so we can build this together because this is definitely not my platform it's our thing so let's refine it our own way i've been putting a lot of effort here to make it unique and fun one thing that took me a long time to figure out how to do but i think it was totally worth it and will add a lot of value to many of you is the bot i made for this section here the limited physical games location and here you'll find the twitter feeds of several limited physical edition sites such as super rare games signature edition games, red art games, I am 8-bit and a lot more. I refined this bot to pieces to get only the tweets that have new game announcements, sales and releases of limited physical games. I know from the comments that a lot of you are physical collectors, so I really think this will be helpful. Another section I want to highlight is the Kickstarter kiosk. I couldn't find a way to automate this one, but I will personally post here with Kickstarter campaigns of games I find interesting. I already do that kind of research for myself. I will also be posting often with game suggestions into sections like Retro Road, RPG Realm, Indies Inn, Pickups Pavilion, Backlog Battlegrounds, among many others. So you can definitely look forward for a lot of stuff from me here. And we are even having game giveaways exclusive to the Discord. So you have a lot of reasons to join in. I'm waiting for all of you there. And do it fast because there will be a giveaway very soon. I'll actually alternate giveaways on Discord and YouTube so everyone can have a chance. Which brings me to today's giveaway. I have two copies of a fantastic game, Katana Zero. The 
This is straight up one of the best action games I have ever played, period. So if you don't have it yet, join this giveaway because you're in it for a treat. To join, it's gonna be the usual method. You have to be subscribed and manifest your interest by leaving a comment down below with the words zero from the void. Don't include your personal contact information yet because it's easy to get YouTube to automatically delete your comment that way. So wait for me to reply to your comment if you're the winner. You all have until Sunday, April 23rd at 11 a.m. Eastern US time to participate. At that date and time, I will lock the pool, pick the winners and contact them by replying to their comments. The code is for a Nintendo Switch copy of Katana Zero and it's for the US region, but you can easily use this anywhere in the world by simply creating an American account on the Switch. It's easy to do and creates zero problems. So this is for everyone. So good luck to all of you who decide to join in. All right, that's enough housekeeping. Join me in the closing bit for a little bit more about the Discord and the channel going forward but in the meanwhile enjoy the tour through my digital 3ds stuff welcome to the channel this is from the void Alright, welcome to my 3DS tour. I spread my games through my two 3DSs. I have a original Cosmo Black 3DS here. This is one of the original colors back when there was no XL model. I love this baby. I think it's the sturdiest model from what I could research online. And I can attest to that. Mine fell several times. There's one mark here from one of those falls. But it's still working perfectly well. I wanted to get this on release date. But it was truly expensive when it came out. And I could not afford it. I wasn't working at the time, but then about one and a half year later when I started working, one of my first purchases with my own money was this little giant here. So unfortunately I never got the chance to be in the ambassadors program. I would have if I could, but that's just life. Several years later I decided to take advantage of a business trip I made to New York and I got myself a new 3DS, straight from the Nintendo store there. It's another black colored one, but I never removed the green Legend of Zelda faceplates ever. I don't care, I think they look beautiful here. I was already considering getting a XL model, so when they announced the new version of the 3DS, I was on board immediately. The extra size and the new features such as the C-Stick, the ZL and ZR buttons, and especially the face tracking for the 3D are all great, but I am having an annoying issue with the D-pad in mind. The right direction is faulty right now, it doesn't register my input sometimes, and I really don't want to open this thing up, because I've seen how insanely cramped up everything is inside it and opening it up and putting it back together is a real challenge so I don't know if you had the same issue on your new 3ds with the d-pad let me know if you were able to fix it somehow but other than that I love this thing as well I use both 3ds's pretty much 50 50 okay let's boot them up now I love how much freedom we had to personalize the home screen with themes and especially badges. I am a huge badge fan, it took me a while to get into them, but once I did I was hooked. I still play Badge Arcade to get the remaining badges they left there since the stores closed, cause the personalization options here are infinite with them and so cool. And also a stark contrast to what we have on the Switch now. I mean the change in philosophy from Nintendo in this aspect went from day to night. There is no personalization options whatsoever on the Switch so far. Only in your profile avatar, I guess, but that's it. I hope they start at least giving us some themes. The black and white ones are getting old and boring real fast. But anyway, on my old 3DS, I used the Stage 1 Super Mario Bros. theme. I think it looks fantastic and it goes real well with the badges. I made a little Super Mario Bros. scene here in the far left with Mario, Luigi, Foreman Spike and Waluigi there. Those two are some of my favorite characters in the Mario universe. And this is also where I keep my main 3DS games, which I divide by genre. I do the same on my new 3DS, but there is an additional genre there, we will get to that. And on the new 3DS, I use the Bowser's Castle theme. I'll show you more of that soon later on.
Now let's take a look at some of the games. Here on the left I kept all games released for the 3DS, meaning non-retro games. The first folder is platformers. Despite being a Nintendo console, the 3DS is surprisingly lacking in platformers. There is not a whole lot. I was expecting more, but the ones we got are pretty cool. I only have three platformers on the new model, because like I said, side-scrollers and pixel art games I prefer having on the old model. So here are only the 3D platformers, all three from Luke Vincent, Harold's Walk, Harold Reborn and Automaton Lung. I've been talking a lot about them recently. They're all great games too if you can handle some intentional ugliness. Meanwhile on the old model I have SteamWorld Dig first. This was a 3DS exclusive for some time. I played it right away when it came out and it's a fantastic game. I couldn't stop playing it. Then we have Ikachan here. This is more obscure. It's from the same developer and in the same world of Cave Story, which is one of my favorite indie games of all time. This is much smaller but very reminiscent of Cave Story. I think it's a great little game with cool challenging controls. Then here we have Harmonite from Game Freak when they were really trying to create games outside of the Pokemon franchise. They made a whole lot of interesting ones but I think none of them really broke through, including Harmonite, which is a loads of fun platformer slash rhythm game with great production value and challenge and a different take on the rhythm genre that deserved better. Then below that we have the Atui games, the two Mutant Muds, which are some of those that use the back of the screen. You can change platforming layers like that, which in this case makes great use of the stereoscopic 3D, by the way, and that's why I got those here. Same thing goes for Zeo Drifter, which has many similarities to those games, but it's a Metroid style gameplay with a big map. Then this one I never got to talk about, this is Kung Fu Rabbit. Cool little game for sure, the platforming feels good, and there's a whole thing around getting enemies from the back to defeat them, it's fun. Not great, but worth the low price it went for. Then moving on to Night Sky, this is a very different kind of platformer. Pressing left or right makes the ball rotate in that direction, not move. It's an interesting distinction, hard to explain, you have to play this. Great game for sure. Next to that is Fluidity Spin Cycle, also known as Hydroventure Spin Cycle. This is such a cool puzzle platformer where you control a body of water and have to tilt the system to have it move to the exit and collect various things. It's much more fun than it looks, probably, given that you enjoy motion controls. And finally, Jet Rocket 2. This is also better than it looks. The game has a surprising amount of variety. There are side-scroller stages, 3D stages, jet ski stages, mini games. It's pretty cool. It looks bland and generic, I know, but plays great. Next we have 3DS action games. There are plenty of games here in this category, other than actual action titles. I also include here pure rhythm games, tower defense games, racing, sports and fighting games. And that's just so I don't end up with too many folders with just a few or one game each. First we have all the three Dylan Rolling Western titles. Those are a mix of tower defense with action, I've only finished the first one so far and played the other two just enough to get a grasp on them and I gotta say I'm looking forward to playing more, especially of the last one. Then Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix. this is such a wonderful rhythm game, it turns the most unusual activities into fun rhythm based mini games, it's such a treat. This is one of those games you will have a smile stamped on your face the entire time you're playing it, it's great. Another rhythm game is Radio Hammer, this is a more standard kind of rhythm game, you have to press different places on the screen or use a combination of touch and button controls, which is even better in my opinion cool rhythm game, nothing out of the ordinary, but solid for sure. Then Ninja Battle Heroes is a fun action platformer, surprisingly high quality too, with lots of abilities to learn and interesting boss fights. And then the Air Ray series. These are such cool tunnel racers, here are both Air Race Speed and Air Race Xeno, but there are two more on the series on the DSiWare, I also have those, but in these two there is a real sense of speed, each stage ramps up the challenge in interesting ways, there are varied missions, if you like racing games these are great, especially for the price they went for, like $3, $4, stuff like that. And the other racer I have here is Speed X 3D Hyper Edition, another obscure racer with an addictive and interesting gameplay loop, 
loop, the stage keeps changing, suddenly you enter danger zones where the rules change, it's another high adrenaline racer, great for fans. Then a sports title here, Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. Sadly, anyone that hasn't played this cannot properly play it anymore, cause the minigames cannot be purchased, there are 10 of them, all baseball themed, they vary a lot too, some even make use of the gyroscopic capabilities of the 3DS, and I found the package so much fun, very much worth the 16 bucks you would spend for getting everything at the minimum price possible, plus the story is so funny and tragic at the same time, I mean this game is something else, happy I got to play it. Next is Moonbound, this is real obscure, it was among the final games ever released for the 3DS, and it's a cool arcade style action game for sure, I played it all the way through and had a good time, you basically have to get all the crystals one at a time and bring them back to the spaceship while avoiding the enemies. The cool thing here is that you have a jetpack that consumes oxygen and you can avoid all enemies with it, so the gameplay balance feels on point, nice little game. Another obscure one is Bike Rider DX2 Galaxy, this is an auto runner, which is far from my favorite genre, but a few games do it right and this is one of them. It's hard to explain, you have access to a bunch of power-ups that change the gameplay considerably, making you fly, burst through rocks and more, it's kinda cool, it was super cheap too. Next, a major title here, I got this one digitally cause it was so cheap at one point that I couldn't say no to. This is Super Street Fighter 4 3D Edition, awesome game, this version has great looking 3D effects and a lot of extras too, and it's now my go-to Super Street Fighter 4 version. Then next, another obscure game, Dot Runner Complete Edition, this is a pretty cool and unique game, it's gonna be hard to explain it briefly, but it's like Pac-Man in first person, no kidding, and there's a whole thing around moving fast, you can do maneuvers like drifting to turn corners, moving sideways and many more, it's a very interesting game, happy to have discovered it, then Kirby Fighters Deluxe is an okay brawler, though it can be repetitive and there are better versions of this fighter style Kirby gameplay, this is far from my favorite game but it's not a bad one, and the last one on this folder is Otosan, this at this point in time is absolutely nothing, it was one dollar this game and I wanted to cover it for part 9 of the eShop closing coverage so I was fine with spending the dollar here, but there is just no game, it is awaiting a possible but not very probable update that will turn it into an actual game, but so far it's nothing, just a grab as many foods as you can in 10 seconds, there are 3 stages for a total of 30 seconds, this game is 30 seconds long, you heard that right, but there's a hope that an update will actually bring more content to it, if it ever happens, I'll make a video on it. On the old 3DS I have Sakura Samurai, this is a pretty great lesser known Nintendo action game, hard to learn the controls here, but awesome once you do, this is a little treasure here, and that's also true for Chibi Robo Photo Finder, another ignored Nintendo game, where Chibi Robo has to help the museum curator guy in filling in his weird museum with everyday life stuff, like toilet paper and power outlets and such, and you do that by taking pictures of the everyday items in your own house, but there's way more than that, with mini games and actual gameplay and all that, this is a fun time for sure, another major game I ended up getting digitally was WarioWare Gold, this is such a cool WarioWare game, it's kind of a return to form after Game & Wario, with the very fast paced micro games, this is loads of fun, I loved it, then Pocket Card Jockey is another Game Freak game, this got a sequel recently actually, surprisingly, but the original remains a 3DS exclusive, this is such a crazy premise, with an addictive gameplay loop, hard to let go of, you can play this for weeks and weeks on end, it effectively mixes horse races with solitaire, and all that makes for a real fun, funny, addictive and charming experience somehow. Next is Aeroporter, this is the unbelievable game that makes the job of a baggage sorting clerk loads of fun, enough said. Escape Vector is a twist on the Pac-Man gameplay, you have to pass through all sections of the stage while avoiding the enemies, and it starts slow but really builds up with abilities and interesting enemies and level designs, then Cats All Corridors is one of those fit the shape of your guy to the shape of the incoming hole, plays super well, lots of fun, Alien on the Run is a quirky game with a unique gameplay, you run around destroying tractor beams by jumping and fever actioning them, as well as trying to find bottles of chili sauce, <laughs> yeah, it's nearly inexplicable this game, but loads of fun. Next two are great Kirby games, Blowout Blast is a very fast paced Kirby game, where the challenge lies in identifying enemy patterns and finding a way to inhale some of them in order to destroy a large group of enemies effectively. The other one is DDD's Drum Dash Deluxe, which is a rhythm game with fantastic gameplay, but way too short for its own 
some benefit. People hammered the game because of that, but it was not expensive, so I found it worth the price for sure. The Legend of Kuzakari is a blast. You are the gardener during a war between men and monsters and have to cut all the grass while avoiding the humans and monsters duking it out. Loads of fun game here. Siesta Fiesta I never got to cover, unfortunately, but it's a chill and enjoyable breakout style game, but in stages that move to the right, so you have limited time to destroy the more important blocks and grab the more valuable collectibles and power-ups. You can also bump the ball higher too, it's pretty cool. Tokyo Crash Mobs is a fun game. I know it's a knockoff of Zuma and not as good as Zuma, but it's still a decent time and Zuma is not on the 3DS I don't think, so fair game for me. And it's such a quirky premise here in Tokyo Crash Mobs, I was cracking up and then Go Go Coco Polo 3D you all must know about at this point, right? I spoke about this like 10 times already, not gonna go there again. And finally, Pokemon Rumble World, this is more for kids and it was a free download and I hear it's unbearable without paying anything through the microtransactions, so the physical copy is better because it gets rid of the microtransactions, but it was free and I had to cover it for a couple of videos. And that's it for action games. Next, let's take a break from games, let me show you the entire layout of my 3DS home screen. I had some fun with this, let me tell you. Cause this is one of the few themes that had an animation of sorts as you scroll to the right. It's like Bowser is running away while spitting fire, so I made a little path for him with all sorts of stuff happening, including upside down Bowser there, which is my reference to Bowser's brother, the fake Bowser, though I couldn't make it blue. And Daisy is the princess in distress this time, but she seems to have things under control. Now for the RPG section. Some big ones I had to get digitally cause the physical prices are just ridiculous were Etran Odyssey Nexus, Yokai Watch 3 and Blasters, Persona Q2, Codecept Revolt and Monster Hunter Stories. Those are all fantastic games, but well known so I'll just blow past all of these. Let's move on to the Danpa Man games. I only played the third one so far but they are all dungeon crawler RPGs with interesting gameplay loop and the gimmick of finding and capturing Danpa Man in the real world with the 3DS augmented reality feature. These are repetitive, but if you enjoy a good dungeon crawler, it could be a fun time. Then the three X Cave games, these are also dungeon crawlers, but action RPGs this time, they're really fun to play, but kind of shallow and lacking on the story side. Then Fragrant Story is the other game that was released incomplete and we are awaiting for an update so that it becomes a complete strategy RPG, because so far it's only 10 to 15 minutes long. Attack of the Friday Monster is not an RPG at all. I think it would classify more as a visual novel, so this folder also has visual novels. Such a heartfelt little game, really makes a great job of showing you what it was like to live in a small town in Japan decades ago as a child, and it's wonderful, plus a real interesting ending on this one. Another one from level 5 is Weapon Shop de Omase, but here you control the weapon shop employee instead of the hero, and have to make weapons according to the NPCs and heroes needs. It's much more interesting than all of that sounds. It also has a little bit of a rhythm gameplay when making the actual weapons. Then Go to Protectors here is a pixel art action RPG I guess. It could also be on the action folder cause this is very fast paced and it also has a lot of tower defense in it. You need to protect the princess and clear all enemy waves with a wide variety of characters to control. Great game. Demon King Box was a last day purchase that I am really happy I ended up making cause the game is surprisingly great with a lot of production value, this is a hidden gem for sure, it has some tower defense elements in it but it doesn't really fit that genre, you're not actually defending, you're sending in characters to attack the enemy and clear the stage, it's a very different kind of gameplay, hard to explain but loads of fun. And Pickdom 2 is a dungeon crawler, I have only played it a tiny bit but like what I saw and the reviews seem pretty good too, it's an action RPG in first person which is unusual. Next is Unchained Blades, another dungeon crawler but this one has a few interesting ideas, for instance the battles many times take several screens, there are so many enemies in the battle that some of them may be on the left or right side, so there's a whole thing around that with you being able to attack all enemies on screen but have to choose which screen, it's cool. I also got the other Yokai Watch Blasters game here and by the way these Blasters games are pretty cool, they're more like action RPGs, the game 
gameplay loop is loads of fun with equipment creation and leveling up. I'm enjoying them a lot. Then Crimson Shroud I have yet to play. I know this is a strategy RPG with strong tabletop inspiration and interesting story. It's also a level 5 game, very well received. Same goes for Inazuma 11, well received level 5 RPG slash soccer game. Really want to try this one out soon. Pokemon Raider here is just a small game to grab Pokemon while using the augmented reality capabilities of the 3DS. But the creatures you capture here can be transferred to Pokemon Y2 and Black 2. So I'll see how that works because I have these games completed. But I only learned about this Dream Raider game a few weeks ago. Moving on to Sadame. This is a real cool and good looking top down action RPG. It is a bit slow in the beginning but evolves a lot. Then The Keep. This is a first person dungeon crawler action RPG with incredible immersiveness. I should have gotten this on the bigger 3DS though. Ambition of the Slimes is a strategy RPG where you control the slimes against the human heroes. It's pretty cool, you possess their bodies which is awesome, it really changes the dynamic of the battles. A couple of Camco RPGs I got on sale here, just two that I found to be a little bit more interesting than most other Camco RPGs, they all seem to be very bland, but I'll give these two a try. Adventure Bar Story is interesting, it looks a bit too RPG Maker like, but plays rather different from usual RPGs. You level up by making meals and eating in your bar, so you have to gather materials for that, which are also used to improve your bar. So there is also a management sim aspect here, providing an interesting gameplay loop. Then next we have Dragon Fantasy, the volumes of Wisteria. This is a really cool retro style RPG, but I actually bought the Wii U version of this and got this one for free. So I'm not gonna touch this one because I'm playing it on the Wii U. And to close things off, a visual novel here and a pretty great one. Chase Cold Case Investigations. This counts with moody atmosphere and tone. You're an investigator and have to interview witnesses and make tough choices. Pretty cool and underappreciated game. Next, the shooters folder. Not a whole lot here, I'm always saying that the 3DS is severely lacking on shooters, but I managed to get a good collection of them here. Liberation Maiden is a fantastic free roaming Zone of the Ender style mecha shooter with a lot of production value. It has the touch of Suda51 too, pretty cool. Zombie Panic in Wonderland DX is a great partially on rails shooter where you use the stylus to aim, it works perfectly well. You can still move left and right and the enemies are varied including the bosses. The game is challenging in a great way in my opinion. Next, all the Inti Creates games, Mighty Gunvolt and Mighty Gunvolt Burst are very similar to the 8-bit Mega Man games in look and feel, but modernizing a lot of things, while Blaster Master Zero is the reboot of this awesome series with the same gameplay in multiple different perspectives. I think this is such a fun game. Then next we have Thorium Wars Attack of the Sky Fighter, which is a sequel to a DSiWare game. Both are great free roaming flying shooters, like some stages in the N64 Star Wars games with several varied missions. It's an interesting game, it's not all that polished, but certainly a worthwhile title. Then Nano Assault EX is simply fantastic in my opinion, a bit on the short side, but not too expensive. I love the setting in microscopic level and the boss fights are a blast. This EX version was only digital, so I'm happy to have it here. Iron Fall Invasion I decided to get for the curiosity factor. It is one of the very few first person shooters on the 3DS, it's a Gears of War clone. Of course, nowhere near the quality of Gears of War, but still a fun time in the 3DS if you can use the C Stick or the Circle Pad Pro. Then, Tank Troopers is another forgotten and underappreciated Nintendo game. This is a tank battler with unique characters that provide different abilities and multiple varied missions to tackle. I enjoyed this a lot. Then, Resident Evil The Mercenaries 3D. This has a physical copy, but as the game won't allow you to delete your save file, I refrained from getting a physical and went with the very cheap digital versions on sale. Cool game, I always enjoyed the mercenaries in other Resident Evil games, I remember obsessing over the one in Resident Evil 4. And then Steel Diver Sub Wars is a first person submarine warfare game, it's slow and weird but can become enjoyable if you put in the effort. Then on my smaller 3DS I have some of the best shooters, chief among them Steel Empire. What a great classic style shoot em up here with beautiful graphics, two very different aircraft to learn and a great challenge to beat, fantastic game. And not far behind at all is Fractured Soul.
This is a must have on the system in my opinion. It's also on Steam, but this was made for the two screens, with you controlling the body and soul of the main character in each screen. Great game, could also be placed on the platformer folder, but it has that sci-fi shooter feeling to it, so I kept it here. Kokuga is another great lesser known shooter, this time in a kind of a top-down view, with a different control scheme and a slower pace, which I appreciated a lot. The music here is kind of epic actually, great soundtrack. Then Chain Blasters is a classic style vertical shooter, but provides such a fun gameplay with the bubble bomb that creates a ripple effect of several bubbles when it contacts with an enemy. And the last shooter here is Metroid Prime Blast Ball, I only downloaded this because it was free and I did not know if it had anything different from the actual game, I still don't. But I do have Federation Force uh, physically, so I'm not gonna be using this one I don't think. Next is the puzzle folder. The 3DS has so many great puzzle games, including a lot of new franchises straight from Nintendo, which is awesome. First here is Professor Layton vs Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, which got a lot of attention recently because the game has DLC that only allows itself to be downloaded once you finish the game. And by the way, I'll say it again, those are still active because they did not pass through the eShop, so you can still get the DLCs for Professor Layton games. But I did play this game the whole way through and got the DLC earlier and it's a pretty awesome game by the way the story really goes places next is Picross 3d round 2 the Picross 3d games are such interesting flips on the Picross formula they were made and published by Nintendo by the way you rotate the Picrosses and have to solve the three-dimensional puzzles it's a blast and the second entry here was a 3ds exclusive that never got a physical in the US only Europe and Japan so I was happy to add it here digitally great game then Mario vs Donkey Kong tipping star Stars. I got that buy one and get the other one for free when I purchased the Wii U version of this game but I should have downloaded in my other 3DS because that's where all my other Mario vs Donkey Kong games are but I played this one on the Wii U anyway. Great game by the way, one of the best Mario vs Donkey Kongs hands down. Then the delusions of Von Sotendorf and his square mind <laughs> is a rather obscure puzzle platformer, more puzzle than platformer, where you can rearrange the rooms in the Baron's house, it's a real interesting game, very quirky, very odd, but lots of fun, hidden gem for sure. Next we have My Nintendo Picross Zelda Twilight Princess, this was a free Picross game, well kinda you had to get it through My Nintendo site and spend 1000 platinum points there, and it's a pretty great Picross game too, loads of content in it. Then Pokemon Picross, I still have a couple of areas to open here, the game remains perfectly playable without the microtransactions, which is great. Pokemon Shuffle though, I have to correct myself from the last video, I said it was working almost completely as usual, but I didn't know it was scheduled to shut down a number of features in a few days, it already happened by the way. Any online features have been removed, so we lost access to any online features. We can't join the competitive stages anymore, nor claim the daily check-in bonuses. The good news is that they left a forever rotating set of special stages but the even worse news is that if you ever remove the battery or SD cards or change the clock in your 3DS you lose all of it. The special stages stop rotating and you can never fix that because you can't check in online anymore. So that sucks big time because those things can happen to your 3DS accidentally. So yeah, that's Nintendo for you. Then Badge Arcade here I'm still using, trying to get the remaining badges but with fewer attempts. The good news is that the red training bonus is still showing up, thanks to everyone that confirmed that, so we can still get the more unreachable badges, but it's a pain, it will take a long time for that. On the other 3DS I have all the Ace Attorney games, Follow Justice, Dual Destinies and Spirit of Justice, down from there the excellent puzzle platformers Pushmo, Crashmo and Stretchmo, then the Parascientific Escape Trilogy, cool obscure puzzle slash visual novels, in the same vein of the Nonary games here, then down one more the Box Boy Original Trilogy, that said goodbye to us but returned on the switch which is great these are mighty fine games then the two free pokemon games i also got here I already talked about those same goes for badge arcade then the other two 3ds mario vs donkey kong games here we have mario and donkey kong minis on the move this one deviates a lot from the traditional gameplay it's more like a pipe dream gameplay you build the paths for the minis to move it's a great title i loved it and mini mario and friends amiibo challenge has a more traditional mario vs donkey kong gameplay 
play and by the way this was a free download but it requires amiibo to play specific ones too you can unlock a bunch of different characters that have different abilities with them it's really cool if you have those amiibos or nfc tags then art of balance touch is a really chill and engaging game you have to stack multiple pieces on top of each other in a way that they are well balanced so not to fall in the water below it's simple yet genius with a lot of different objectives then shift dx this is a puzzle platformer where you shift from black to white in a rather mind-bending way fine game in a long series puzzle labyrinth is a first person dungeon crawler puzzle exploration game very unique i know it doesn't look too exciting but plays really well after the boring tutorial this next one i ended up not talking about this is groove heaven it is a puzzle rhythm game it's not great but not bad either a seven or so the protagonist can only move and turn on the beat and the challenge lies in doing that while figuring out how to traverse the traps and obstacles interesting little game not bad at all moving on to simple but fun pazuru this also requires some amount of skill and dexterity you control the shapes on the stage by rotating them to create a path for yourself to collect all the things and exit the stage it's fast paced and lots of fun pazuru then ono oh odyssey is a physics based puzzle platformer where you manipulate the environments in order to create a path for the alien heads to reach the exit it sounds very similar to mario vs donkey kong but feels very different cool little game Now the final folder for non-retro 3DS games is the horror folder. Yeah, horror games on the 3DS. And all of them I decided to put on the new 3DS, so this folder is only here. So let's take a look. First here we have the Mantium Remastered. This is a great horror survival, could just as well be called the Mantium Remade because they actually did remake all the environments and pretty much the entire graphics of the DS original. This game is actually really solid horror survival in combat story and atmosphere happy to have this here then next we have the silver falls games some are more horror than others but i felt like they should definitely be all together because they all connect with each other and they all do have elements of horror especially in the first entry here three down stars which is my favorite since i've talked about this series last time i've played a lot more of these and they all grew on me a lot i'm enjoying every single one of them some i have already finished like undertakers goldbusters and guardians and Metal exterminators but there's still stuff to do on them while Gaiden Deathly Delusion Destroyers is much deeper than I thought initially and a great game for sure then the final two games here are the Starship Demry this counts with great pacing and narrative you're stuck inside a capsule but have access to a few robots that you can control remotely and you use them to find a way to release yourself there is some light puzzle solving and a lot of exploration and it counts with some jump scares and eerie atmosphere and the final one is Moon Chronicles this one could also be in the shooter category but it has some creepy atmosphere so i placed it here it's a metroid prime like and a really good one at that combat feels great and so does the exploration this is a fine game exclusive to the 3ds Next we'll move to the retro stuff, but before that, let me show you the rest of the layout in my old 3DS. After the original Super Mario Bros scene, we have a Box Boy scene, I separate each one with a tower of apps and folders, then next I have a Kirby scene here, followed by a Mario vs Donkey Kong scene. And the final one here is from Super Mario World, which is my favorite. It takes a while to place all these badges, but I had some fun, I love this kind of thing. For the retro games. I'm gonna go extra fast here because for instance in my DSiWare folders I already talked about each one of these in my DSiWare coverage with three videos. Check the link in the corner there if you're interested and also because I did buy way more than these but I can't have them all installed at the same time because the DSiWare games use a very limited space so even splitting them between the two 3DS's I ended up having to keep many games in the SD cards so you can't see them in the dashboard so I'm keeping just the cream of 
of the crop here. Just the very best DSiWare games. And believe it or not, that's saying a lot, because the DSiWare's catalog is much better than it looks. Back in the day, I think it was an awesome effort from Nintendo, managing to bring forward to the 3DS almost the entire catalog of DSiWare titles, over 400 of them. I wish they did the same with more WiiWare games, a lot was lost on the transition to the Wii U, and now on the Switch, there was simply no continuity. All of these games are dead as far as Nintendo is concerned, which is a huge shame, because some are fantastic, like Xscape, a phenomenal action exploration in space with slick sci-fi graphics and awesome gameplay, and then a Kappa's Trail here is a brilliant little game where you draw the path for your Kappa creatures to walk, and then the grabbing hand from Zelda will follow you in the same path, so you must always be on the move and find a way to unlock the barriers and reach the exit. Great game here from Nintendo, this is a treasure. Same thing goes for both Mighty Games, Mighty Flip Champs is a tough as nails puzzle platformer with multiple dimensions, and Mighty Milky Way is a platformer in space with some pretty interesting and unique gimmicks like creating little planets. Dark Void Zero here, from what I understand, was a Capcom game never released on the NES that they kind of revived for the DSiWare, and it's completely unplayable anywhere else now, because they also removed the Steam version, that happened only a few months ago actually, and this is kind of a mini metroidvania, each stage is a small metroidvania stage with freedom to explore, great game, then SteamWorld Defense is the first SteamWorld game ever, I think even most SteamWorld fans don't know about this one, despite how famous the series got later on, another hard as hell game, then Dr. Mario Express is a regular Dr. Mario game, Little Red Riding Hood Zombie Barbecue is a great top down partially on rails shooter with a crazy setting and story, this one was removed from the eShops a couple of weeks before they closed them, I have no idea why that happened, they probably lost a good amount of money from the last minute purchases, then Aura Aura Climber is such a fun platformer using the stylus, Mario vs Donkey Kong Minis March Again is a DSiWare exclusive Mario vs Donkey Kong and a great one, Number Battle is such a brilliant puzzle game versus the CPU, hard to explain briefly and this is from Nintendo, same goes for Trajectile, a breakout inspired puzzle game, fantastic, Castle of Magic is an exclusive platformer, pretty solid, the two better Game & Watch games were the only ones I ended up buying, Donkey Kong Jr and Mario Cement Factory, then Chapo is a unique puzzler where you have to balance the puzzle pieces in the screen, quite enjoyable, and this was just to fit the remaining space, Horizontal Bar, pretty interesting platformer, hard controls, but great once you get it. On my new 3DS I keep Chronos Twins, which is a pretty cool action platformer where you need to look at both screens, Commando Steel Disaster is a Metal Slug clone, hard but great, Mastro Green Grooves, a brilliant rhythm game, Soul of Darkness is, believe it or not, a Symphony of the Night clone, and pretty great one too, exclusive to the DSiWare, Amida's Path is awesome, hard to explain, you connect the lines to send in attacks to the enemies, but they will do the same to you, so it's a hard gameplay to get, Link and Launch is an intelligent systems game, also from Nintendo, that no one knows about, exclusive to the DSiWare, and a freaking fantastic puzzle game here, same goes for Flametail, unique and awesome, from Nintendo, and same thing goes a third time for Starship Defense, a DSiWare exclusive Nintendo tower defense game, comes with great graphics and gameplay. Ami Battle is another tower defense, this one is on Switch though, but I'm happy to have it here, plays great. Armada is such a unique game, you're basically air traffic control during a war, guiding aircraft and helicopters to land and refuel, then go back to battle, simple but fun. Elite Forces Unit 77 is a warfare top down shooter, quite unique too, you do everything thing with the stylus and it worked perfectly well for me. This was also removed from the stores two weeks prior to the closure. Populous Solo is a very enjoyable pop the bubbles game with a lot of production value. Believe it or not this is a great game. Spotto is a simple fun bomb throwing game and Birds and Beans is fantastic. It was originally a WarioWare micro game that really deserved this full title, even if only on the DSiWare. Then Pro Jumper Guilty Gear Tangent is a quirky and fun action platformer with this Guilty Gear year's mascot that I never heard about, very bizarre, and finally the two topsy-turvy games, which I believe are the only ever 3DS games that you have to play holding the 3DS upside down, for some very interesting and creative gameplay, especially on the second one.
now the 3D classics. These are some of the coolest retro games on the 3DS hands down and something that I'm sure will be missed in the future. I think these were largely ignored or forgotten and will probably sting in the future, especially considering that these versions are all exclusive to the 3DS and many are simply the best versions of these classic games ever made. In my old 3DS I got all the Nintendo published ones, all six of them. Some of these are pretty great including Excitebike and Kid Icarus. The enhancements to the visuals make a whole lot of difference, that's also true for Urban Champions, while Kirby is less impressive. The same goes for Twin B and Exivius is another pretty solid one when it comes to the 3D graphics. And on my new 3DS I have all the Sega 3D classics. The collection has 10 games including Thunder Blade and Galaxy Force 2, which makes simply fantastic use of the 3D functionality, but the collection you can luckily still get physically. However, there are another 10 Sega 3D classic games that were only released digitally. I decided to get only half of them. Gunstar Heroes, Shinobi 3, Afterburner 2, which is a great one, and the same goes for Space Harrier and Outrun. Every single one of them make great use of the 3D and will definitely be my go-to options for these games because I do enjoy the 3D effect on the 3DS a lot. Then for NES games, I got only 3 of them on my old 3DS. The highlight definitely goes to Mysterious Murasami Castle, which was the only time this game ever made it to the West, officially. And this is a very cool old school Zelda style gameplay, but much more action inclined than Zelda games, than the original Metroid and the original Zelda here. These were some of my first ever purchases on the eShop, and that's how I played and beat both of these for the first time. On my new 3DS, I got only a couple of SNES titles. Only the new models of 3DS's got the releases of SNES games, which was kinda lame, but I only ended up getting these two games here, Super Mario World and Demon's Crest, both are fantastic games, Super Mario World needs no introduction, but Demon's Crest deserved way more recognition. This is such a cool action game with a lot of freedom, an overworld map, several transformations for the main character and a great challenge, this is an excellent game. But I only ended up getting these two games here because the SNES classic mini was announced soon after I bought my new 3DS and that mini console became my go-to SNES system. Then Game Boy games, I got a good chunk of them here. The absolute highlight goes to Mole Mania, brilliant puzzle game. Then the other Kid Icarus game of Myths and Monsters is a much lesser known Kid Icarus entry, I have yet to play it though, but I hear great things about. The three Donkey Kong Land games are not dumbed down versions of the SNES originals, I think there is a lot of misconception about that, they are their own games and surprisingly well made for the Game Boy. Then Metroid 2 Return of Samus, this was also a early purchase for me, but I have yet to play it, I did finish the 3DS remake though. Sword of Hope 2 was a final last minute purchase, I got it because I was into the original Sword of Hope as a kid, so this is completely nostalgia based and I wanna see if this one is good for myself. Then Game & Watch Gallery, dude, the Game & Watch Gallery games are better than you think, they modernize every game on the Game & Watch collection, you also have access to the originals there, I am obsessing over Game & Watch Gallery 4 on the Wii U right now and having a good time and I played this first one on the series and it's also pretty cool. Then the Game Boy Color games here, the two Oracle Zelda games, this is where I finished both of them and did the whole password thing to unlock content in both, pretty awesome, had a blast. And Wario Land 3, this is also where I played that game, cause I never had a Game Boy Color or a Game Boy Advance for that matter. On the new 3DS I have far fewer Game Boy games, only Donkey Kong 94, which is a phenomenal puzzle platformer, it holds up very well to this day. And the two first Wario Lands are here instead of in the old one, I messed up with the continuity there. And finally Lufia The Legend Returns, which I have yet to play, but I was a huge Lufia 2 fan back in the day. And since then I've been meaning to play all the entries in the series, but so far only found time to finish the original. And the original by the way has one of the best twists in an RPG story ever, but the game itself is painful to endure. 
Then the final retro folder is for the Game Gear games. I ended up only getting a few of them. Vampire Master of Darkness, a real surprisingly great Castlevania-like action game here. Defender of the Oasis, a cool retro turn-based RPG. And Shining Force, the Sword of Hagia, a strategy RPG from this famous franchise. But this folder here is one of my regrets. I should have gotten more Game Gear games. The final folder is for a bunch of demos. These were also made unavailable when the eShops closed. And all of these here provide important exclusive stuff not found in the games themselves. The highlight definitely goes to Bravely Second, cause this demo here has a whole new story not found in the actual game. Then you can unlock two exclusive weapons by finishing the demo of Codename Steam. Monster Hunter Stories demo unlocks some items and an exclusive costume for your feline companion. Pokemon Sun and Moon's demo unlocks a special Greninja with a different ability and Kirby Battle Royale unlocks Meta Knight but I hear you can do that in the game itself. Just quickly I wanna pass through the regrets I have, the games I ended up not buying but wish I had. The main one is Bugs vs Tanks, I thought I had bought this one, I even checked it off the wishlist, but I must have mistaken it for another level 5 game or maybe Tank Troopers, I'm not sure what happened. It's a fun game, I think it's a slightly underrated title, I was having fun with the emulated copy I have but I wish I had it on the 3DS, it would be much better. Hazumi is another one I thought I had purchased but didn't, fun breakout style game. And on the Virtual Console, I also wish I had gotten more games, namely Bionic Commando, Elite Forces, the Game Boy Kirby games like Dreamland 2, and more Game Gear titles such as Tales Adventure and G Locker Battle. I'm still very happy about the 3DS collection I got, I'd say I'm 98% content, but those final 2% sting, I'm not gonna lie. And that's it everyone, that's all I've got on my 3DS's, hope you enjoyed the tour, thank you so much for subscribing to the channel, if you do you can count on me to always provide you with videos covering interesting lesser known games, games information, news and trivia, and now that the 3DS and Wii U eShops are closed, I want the channel to move on to other things, so I'm making a list here with things that I'm interested in doing, for you guys to say whether you're interested in them or not, and for that I'll do a series of polls on the channel, so I would appreciate your participation participation a lot, it's just gonna be simple questions, yes or no, no need to waste any time, like are you interested in me doing videos covering an entire series retrospective at a time, like the F0 one I made, are you interested in reviews returning, yes or no, and so on, I'll start releasing these polls soon, so keep an eye out for them, so that we can make this channel the best it can be, and on that point, once again I invite you to join the channel's discord server, that will be a real great way for us all to communicate and share news and what we've been playing and other interesting we have outside of gaming as well as discord exclusive giveaways and much more so do join me there check out the channel's patreon if you want to contribute directly in keeping the channel alive thank you so much to those of you who already do thank you for watching and i'll see you soon Bye.